Good evening, everybody. This is Brother Brandon coming to you live from Fort Smith, Arkansas, with another Fishers and Men broadcast. It is good to be here with you late this evening. I know I am on late, and I'm like a day or two late, but y'all, if you can bear with me and forgive me, um, I had a really busy day yesterday, so I wasn't able to come on here yesterday to do this. So I am coming on today to doing this just for you so that you all can stay up to date on the Contentious uh, series. And uh, this is Contentions Part 7, and we're going to be getting into the Doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And uh, we are... Uh, just won't get in. We're not just going to get into that, but I'm going to kind of show you how this correlates to the Pharisees and uh, how the Pharisees were, you know, most likely it looks like, according to what I've seen and kind of looked at, the Pharisees uh, would very well be guilty of, of a lot of this. Okay, so. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead, so that's what we're going to be getting into tonight, and hopefully this will be a blessing to you all. Pray for me, pray for the broadcast, pray that the broadcast will make it all the way through and download just fine and also get it upload quickly, okay? So we're going to be getting into it. Again, the, the lesson tonight is Contentions Part 7, The Doctrine of the Nicolaitans, and um so to start off here tonight, um, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Peter. 2 Peter and uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. Again, that was 2 Peter chapter 18, verse 19. And this is what it says. It says, For when they speak great, great swelling words of vanity... They allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape, escaped from them who live in error. Here's the key part. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. And so if there's any verse that you can kind of apply to what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans are, it's going to be here in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. It says, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. Okay, so here's here, here's what here's what it is. Here's what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans are. Okay, this is just part of it. Okay, so the Nicolaitans are a group of Christian congregation members mentioned in the Bible. It's mentioned in the Word of God, of uh, Revelation two six fourteen to fifteen. The exact origin of the Nicolaitans is unclear, but some commentary. Commentators believe they were a heretical sect that followed the teachings of Nicholas. 
Others believe the name comes from the Greek word Nikola, which means let us eat. Um, the Nicolaitans are associated with a doctrine that the Lord hated, and some of their teachings include... Here are some of the teachings. This is not all of it, but this is some of it we're going to touch on tonight. Um, perverting grace, replacing liberty with license, encouraging each other to eat things offered to idols, teaching Israel to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols, and by committing um, sexual immorality, justifying sexual perversion and not holding to the sacredness of marriage in the church, living in unrestrained indulgence, having a habit of indifference as to what a man ate and as to how he lived, using Christian liberty as an occasion for the flesh. The Nicolaitans are also said to be guilty of enticing God's people to commit acts of immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols and revelation, you know, to fornicate. And its cog cognates are usually metaphorical for spiritual apostasy and idol worship. Um, so, now, the term Nicolaitan, it, uh, it, 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 if I have it correct, the, 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 the term Nicolaitan refers to, it, it means, um, let's see here. Here we go. Um, oh, maybe not. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of how what see now the Nicolaitans means to you know to lord over or conquer conquer people okay and if you think about and I want you to think about something here for a second to conquer okay um so one of the things that we just read here was about how we're placing liberty with license. Now I want you I want you to think about what we just read here in 2 Peter 2:19. It says, "While they promise him liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage." So turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness. Okay? And we're not to use the, we're not to use our liberty as a means as as a means to sin okay now real quickly actually uh, oh that's not what I want let's go liberty okay so, let's talk about that real quick before we get into the verses. Um, let's see here. I gotta find it here. Well, here's, here's one here. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay? Now, Galatians 5, 13. For brethren, ye have been called on the liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but love, serve one another. Okay? So, we are not to use our liberty for the occasion of the flesh. And this is what the doc, this is part of what the doctrine uh, is, is the part of the doctrine of the Nicolaitans 
is them people telling others that you can use your liberty to sin. In other words, oh, it's okay, once you're saved, you're always saved. Or, you know, they'll say like, well, if you just say a prayer and, you know, you can just say a prayer to, to get into heaven and then you can just live however you want. And that is not what the Bible teaches. The doctrine of the, of the Nicolaitans is to put people in bondage, therefore, hence the name, to conquer men. And they conquer men by putting them in bondage of sin with, the prom with them promising that it's liberty and it's not. Again, 2 Peter 2.19, it says, While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. So they use liberty as a promise, but really they are they're putting people in bondage, uh, and they're putting people in bondage by sin, and but they they're promising something that they can't deliver. And so we see here that this doctrine of the Nicolaitans is actually the opposite of sanctification. There is no sanctification when it comes to the Nicolaitans. I've said that if you take sanctification out of Bible Christianity, it's no longer Bible Christianity. And so what you get is, you get, when you take sanctification out, you get the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which the Lord hates. He hates it. Why? Because it goes against the teaching of, and the doctrine of sanctification. You cannot have the doctrine of sanctification and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans coexisting with each other. It does not work. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans and the doctrine of sanctification are two completely opposite doctrines. Now, Revelation 2.6 Revelation 2.6. I'm going to use my phone if that's okay. Let's use the phone. Revelation chapter 2 verse 6. Let's go to Revelation 2.6. Revelation 2... Whoops. 2.6. Now, it says here... Let's, let's go back up here. For starting in verse 1. Okay? Onto the church, onto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else i will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent but this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the nicolaitans which i also hate he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So you see that while that Jesus Christ is a meek, he's a loving, he's a, he's a gentle, he's a patient, he's a holy and righteous judge. There are things that our Lord hates. And this doctrine is one of those things he hates. Okay? It's one of those things he hates. Now, let's go down to Revelation chapter 2. It's Revelation 2, verse 15. Okay? Um, here we go. It says, And to the angel... Okay, so let's start in verse 12. And to the angel of the church and Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges... I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, where 
dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days where an Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed on the idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name, written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receive it. receiveth it. So we see here, okay, so as we see about the teaching of committing com, uh, uh, eating things sacrificed to idols and teaching thing and teaching uh, uh, teaching Israel to eat food sacrificed to idols and committing uh, fornication okay now we also see this. And Revelation chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, um, hang on, no, it's not Revelation 3, by the way, what we just read, take take a look at this. Revelation chapter 2. And what is wrong with my glasses? I don't know what's going on. Revelation chapter 2. Okay. Revelation chapter 2, starting here in verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write these things, saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess. Get ready for it. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and then they commit adultery with her in the great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know. I am he that searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto you every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine... And which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star." He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, I think it's... Oh, man, my nose is itchy. Y'all forgive me. All right, but here's what's interesting. So, you have back-to-back -back churches. You have the church of Thyatira. And you also have the church of Pergamos. So you get the church of Pergamos, and you immediately get into Thyatira afterwards. And you notice that there's a reason why God put those two together. Now why is that? It's because both of those churches were guilty of holding to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Because both had taught to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. So both of these churches are back-to-back. -back. Okay, I want you to notice that. 
I think it's really interesting. God had a purpose for that. But that's why those things are back to back. Because it, God is showing you that these two churches were holding to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Okay? Now, since we got that out of the way, let's, let's continue forward. Now, the first thing here is perverting grace. Now, there are kind of really two ways you can pervert grace. One way to pervert grace is adding more grace, teaching more grace, and neglecting everything else. So it's all grace, 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 but no righteousness, no holiness, no sanctification, no nothing. And so we see here that when you add grace to the extent of using that as a license to sin, that's where you go wrong. Okay? That is where you go wrong. And we're not to use... We're not to use our liberty for the occasion of the flesh. Okay? So, we see here, and it kind of goes into the ne in that next point, replacing liberty with license. So, basically, you could pervert grace to a point where you're using grace as a means to have people have a license, quote-unquote, to sin means that there is no sanctification involved. That's one way you can pervert grace. Another way you could pervert grace is by legalism. Being legalistic. Being so legalistic that there is no grace. You pervert it so much to where there is no grace. Okay? Now, Turn with me to Acts chapter 15, verse 5. I'm going to give you an example of this. Acts chapter 15, verse 5. Acts chapter 15. Oh, yep. So there's Acts. We need to go Acts 15, verse 5. Okay? It says this. But there rose up a certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed. Okay, did you get that? Within the Pharisee circle, there was a sect of Pharisees which believed. Okay, now here's what they were saying. Which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together together. For to consider of this matter. Okay, so you got the sect of this, you got a certain sect of the Pharisees that were saying, well, listen, you can't get saved unless you were circumcised and having to command to keep the law of Moses. So they're not just making so they're not just making grace of none effect, but they're perverting grace to they're perverting grace in so much that they're putting the law over grace. Okay? Now let's see here. Uh, let's see, and okay. So Romans five seventeen for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, oh, let's see here. 
Grace Frustrate. You know what? I'm gonna hang on. Let me I got I gotta find it here. Let's see. Frustrate. Here we go. I, I think this really exemplifies what I'm what we're here. Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Did you get that? So, these, these Pharisees, that, the, the, keep in mind, these are believers. They believed. But they were telling them that they need to keep the, the, they need to keep the law of Moses and being circumcised. So right there, they are frustrating. They frustrate the grace of God. Amen. They frustrate the grace of God. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna let me see. Bear with me here for a second. All right. Um, so we see here that okay. So the, these Pharisees are frustrating the grace of God. Okay, so I had something in mind that's it's kind of slipping me. It's kind of slipping away from me. So bear with me here. Um, so they're frustrating the grace of God by teaching these people that they have to be circumcised and by the keeping of the law. But if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died in vain. Okay, now. Um, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto the men and brethren, You know how that a good while ago God made a choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. So, this thing was being disputed. Now you might say, well, well, that's great and all, but Brandon, what does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with with that with, with with what I'm talking about, with contentions and disputings. These Pharisees who believed were wanting to dispute this matter. They were disputing this matter and and trying to argue with with with, with the with these elders and apostles, and when there was much disputing, Peter stood up and basically shut down the disputing, and in, in, and in a loving way, Peter was saying that we're saved by grace through faith. Now let me I'll tell you what. There are Christians who may be born again who are Pharisees. Okay? And you get these people that love to dispute 
others. They love to argue. They want to be contentious about, about things. And it, and, it, and, it, and it should not be. You realize that when these Pharisees were wanting to dispute this with the apostles and elders, Peter rose up. And he lovingly told the truth as it was. Peter rose up. Okay? And you realize here in verse 12, Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. So you realize that Peter stood up and he, he spoke to him in the midst of all this contention and all this disputing. And they all held they all held their peace. Peter spoke the truth and they all held their peace. They kept that they kept silence. Think about that. They kept, he kept silence. They kept silence. All because of what Peter said. Now, it's interesting that God shows us that what Peter said was, you know, Peter, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he says, Why tempt ye God? to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers were, nor we were able to bear. So, these Pharisees weren't just teaching the law. They were disputing with them and trying to put it, a yoke on them that they couldn't keep. Think about that. And, and keep in mind, these Pharisees were a certain sect of them, of them that actually believed. And they were putting them in bondage. Think about that. The Pharisees were putting, these group of Pharisees were trying to put these people in bondage under a yoke. To try to keep the law. So you see, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans goes both ways. You can be so legalistic to where you could put people in bondage under the law, or you can you could go so far right to where you could say, Well, we could just live however we want to. We could say one prayer and you know, once once saved, always saved, and you know. We could uh, go off and live, live like the devil. Well, first of all, if you think you can pray a prayer and live like the devil, you're most likely not saved. Because you can't just pray. You can. You can't just. You should. You can't just pray a prayer to just to get out of hell and think that you can just go ahead and live however you want to. Jesus Christ did not come and die so that you can sin more. Jesus Christ came and died to save you from your sins. So therefore, whatever route that you go, you're making the cross of Christ of none effect. So you see, there is two extremes. And both of these require both of these can create people to be contentious and disputing the the doctrine of the nicolaitans is not a doctrine that is christ like because we just read that Christ hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. 
Why? Because they're putting, it puts people in bondage. It conquers them. How, how do they get conquered? They get conquered by being put in bondage. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans does not do this. It doesn't do it. Now, um, so that's how they pervert grace. Replacing liberty with license. Okay, we have already kind of gone through that. But there's a lot of scripture on sanctification. Um, oops, I can't spell today. Brandon, you knucklehead. Let's see. Let's, uh... Let me see something here. What in the world? Liberty. Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 9. But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. 1 Corinthians 10, 29. Conscience, I say, on, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Now we know that uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Galatians 5.1 Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Uh, verse 13, For brethren, ye have been called on the liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion <clears throat> to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Uh, here we go, first... 1 Peter 2.16 As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Amen? <coughs> now, um, see here there is another one here bear with me Let's see here. Lasciviousness. I gotta I gotta figure that out here. Hang on. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Um Here we go. Jude chapter 1 verse 4. For there are certain men crept in and awares, who were 
before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see here that this license of sin is turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. And so we're not to do that. We're not to use our liberty as a means to license the sin. Now, but we've already gone into the offer of, of idols and sacrifice to idols and committing fornication. Um, this one here, justifying um, perversions and not holding the sacredness of marriage in the church. So I want you to think about something else too. So, think about what is going on with the American church. How is it? Isn't it ironic that you have all these churches that use all these New Age Bibles? They'll say, well, we, we can live however we want to and we can party it up and, 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 and they'll use, you know, they'll just... They'll do things right in their own eyes, and you'll start to see people that will just say, well, you know, God loves you, and he cares for you, and he, he, he just wants the best for you, and the world starts, you know, and the world just starts, you know, getting into the church, and they start teaching that, oh, well, you can compromise the truth. You know, Jesus, you know, doesn't care about your sin and you can just live however you want to. Or you got Pope Francis, the talking Pope that says, well, everybody will go to heaven and, and all this stuff. Well, here's the problem with that. The problem with that is when you get people that say stuff like that and that say stuff like, well, you can just live however you want to. You could, you, could, you could say a prayer and get saved and live like the devil the rest of the week. Isn't it interesting that you've got every single one, that you get a lot of those churches that are like that, that have accepted the LGBTQ community, the queer community. Isn't it interesting that it's those churches that will tell you, well, you can live however you want to. God doesn't care. It's those churches that have accepted the LGBTQ community and therefore they have gone forth to perverting what marriage is. And it all starts with a New Age Bible. Okay? Let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at something here. Fine of Sodom. Vine of Sodom. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 31 to 32. It says, For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom in the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and stilled up among my treasures? So you see that these... So we see here... The sacredness of marriage. That all these churches that say you can live however you want to and Jesus don't care. It's these churches that destroy the sacredness of marriage by allowing the, the LGBTQ to come in and they'll start marrying them. They'll start having queer priests. They'll start having all these things. Bringing in, in perversions.
again, justifying perversions and not holding, justifying fornication perversions and not holding to the sacredness of marriage and the church. That would constitute the LGBTQ. Is an, 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 is an interesting that it's also those churches that actually allow that that when you point out their sin guess what they do they'll start being contentious with you they'll start brawling with you they'll start fighting with you why because they don't like the truth being preached where a lot of good Bible preachers go wrong is that they'll sink down to their level and guess what? They're just as guilty as them. If you get a group of sodomites that want to be contentious towards you and brawlers towards you, because let's get real, they're not very, they're not very um, tolerant of Bible Christianity. Okay? So just because, and preacher, hear me out. Pastors, evangelists, hear me out. Just because you've got sodomites that want to be contentious and brawler again, brought into brawl against you, that does not give you a right to stoop down to their level. You stoop down to their level and you start being contentious back, then you're just as guilty as they are. You have to pray for them. You have to witness to them. You have to give them the truth. You have to be gentle with them. Don't condemn them. Just because you get people that will be contentious to, towards you does not mean that you should stoop down to their level and be contentious back. Take the high road. Turn the other cheek. Stand your ground. Be loving. Be gentle. But don't compromise the truth. And there's a lot of people that, there's a lot of people that will do that. They'll stoop down to their level and they'll start being contentious and argue back. People should not be doing that. Pastors, you shouldn't be doing that. All you street preachers, you should not be doing that. Don't be stooping down to, to, to the level of others just so you can get back at them. Listen, you can be contentious all you want and win the argument and still lose the war. Don't be that way. Don't be contentious. Don't be a brawler. Be Christ-like. Be loving. Be gentle. Be firm. Speak in the truth and love without compromise. But do not, under any circumstance, be contentious and brawling. And it's these churches, and it's the LGBT community that will, that will do this against Bible Christianity. Don't stoop down to their level. Take the high road. Be Christ-like. Living. Uh, next one is living in unrestrained indulgences. Think about the Catholic Church and them selling indulgences. Indulgences is basically a get a get rich quick scheme to take advantage of, of, of people who do sinful things just so they can make money off of people's sins. What do they do? They make merchandise of you. They make merchandise of you. That's what they do. They make merchandise of you. And we've already kind of went over the, the other parts of it. A lot of this was actually kind of um, kind of combined. Into, a lot of that stuff can be combined, okay? So so just bear with me, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get done here pretty quick here. But I want to I go to this verse. I want to go to this verse here. Okay? Let's go to this verse. Um, let's see here. I got to find my mouse here. 
Okay, so make merchandise. Here we go. Okay, so Deuteronomy uh, 21, 14, it's really interesting. The, the term make merchandise is actually mentioned twice in your King James Bibles. Okay, so first occurrence is Deuteronomy 21, 14. It says, and it shall be, if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go whither she will, but thou shalt not sell her at all for money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her, because thou hast humbled her. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 3 and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Okay, so the Catholic Church will make merchandise of you. How? They'll do it by the means of indulgences. The Roman Catholic Church is probably the greatest example of of them going through the the of them holding to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The Roman Catholic Church is the big one that is a likely candidate of one that holds to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Okay, you've got churches that accept um, LGBTQ and, and ordaining queer priests and 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 submitting to the things of this world and living like the world and any church let's put it this way any church that allows the world to come in and influence it and and to uh basically conform that church to the ways of the world it's those churches that most likely will be the ones to hold to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Why? So that they can use that doctrine to put you in bondage and to conquer you. Those churches that teach and preach that you can live however you want to and still go to heaven, it's those churches that will say that they claim, they'll claim to give you liberty but in reality, they're dragging you to hell in chains and in bondage. Whether it be living however you want to or being legalistic about it. Well, Brother Brian, I don't like that. Well, you know what? If you don't like that, take it up with God. If I'm wrong, God will correct me. But if I'm right, God will show you. Let's not be naive. The, 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 doctrines, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is meant to put you in bondage. And it's to put... Why? Because Satan knows if he can get you in bondage, he'll conquer you. Okay. Now. Um, let's see here. Second Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty. It says, "For if, for ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage." If a man devour you, if a man take you, take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Galatians 2, 4, and that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Let me read that again. That is the epicenter of of what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is. Galatians chapter 2 verse 4, And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. 
uh, Galatians 4 3 even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world Uh, Galatians 4 verse 9 but now after that ye have known God or rather are known of God how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage Galatians 5 verse 1 stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage Uh, Hebrews 2.15 And delivered them who through fe uh, fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Uh, 2 Peter 2.19 While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome. Of the same is he brought in bondage. Let's take a look at the word conquer real quick. And then we'll close. Revelation six six two and I saw and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist, Satan. The Antichrist, the false, they want to put you in bondage. And they'll do it by conquering you. They'll conquer you by putting you in bondage. The only thing that the doctrine of the Nicolaitans offers anybody is bondage. And again, it's a twofold thing. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans can put you in bondage by the means of legalism, but it also can put you in bondage by the means of sin. Okay? Now, Romans 6.23 Romans 6.23 Let's start in verse 22. It says, But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we see here that, the, that God has made you free from sin. Which, by the way, that right there shows you why... Christ hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans because the doctrine of the Nicolaitans wants to put you in bondage to sin by telling you that you can sin all you want to and they'll pass it off as liberty. But what they're really doing is putting you in bondage to sin. But God has made you free from sin. When sin is done, it brings death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I hope this kind of gives you what the, 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 the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans only puts people in bondage. By the law and or by promising false freedom by putting them in sin. Either way, it's putting you in bondage. Either by the means of sinning freely without repercussion or putting you under the law and being legalistic about it. Now, I hope that you see why God hates this, this doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And I will tell you, 
how all this fits in with being contentious and with being a brawler is that you get these people on both sides of the spectrum the legalistic people and those who say they will sin how they they will sin and they don't care what you think but they'll just live their life in sin and think they can live however they want to like devils both groups two separate groups two opposite groups they will come after bible believers and they will be contentious towards them but Bible believers, you should not be contentious towards them. Just because you're contentious towards you does not make and give you the right to be contentious back to them. Just saying. Don't stoop down to their level. Because it's not, it, it, it's, it's not going to do you any good. And if you stoop down to their level and you start being contentious at them when they're contentious with you, then you're just as guilty as they are. And you need to repent. You know what the good news is? The good news is you can be forgiven. The good news is you don't have to follow the ways. You don't have to follow the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. You don't have to follow that. Matter of fact, Jesus hates it. He hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. You should too. Why would you want to be put in bondage by law or by sin? Because that's what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans will do. It will either put you in a position to where you're in bondage to sin or you're in bondage to the law. You don't want to be in bondage to that. Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross to save you from sin. Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Why? Because he is the one, he is the only one who is able to keep the law perfectly without sin. We can't keep it. But that's why we need Christ. Will you choose to accept Christ today? Will you choose to abandon the doctrine of the Nicolaitans? And will you go and will you uh, will you go and will you um, trust Christ as your Savior? The choice is yours. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And remember this: whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's not just those who are lost, but it's also God's people. People of God, if, if you're struggling, you can cry out and ask God to deliver you from this particular doctrine. Amen. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay there. You can come out from, from underneath. Come out from among them. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. That right there is sanctification. And I will tell you, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans opposes sanctification. And sanctification opposes the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Because the only thing the doctrine of the Nicolaitans will ever do is put you in bondage either by, by sin or by the law. Christ does not like that. Christ does not want anybody in bondage. He came to save his people from their sins. Amen. So, while we are, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do another hymn, shall we? Let's do another hymn. Um, Let's do victory in Jesus, because I'll tell you what, Jesus, it's through Jesus Christ that you can gain victory over these false doctrines. And it's through Jesus Christ that you can, you can gain victory 
over sin. Amen. Christ overcame, and if Christ lives within you, you can overcome too. Amen. Let's go ahead and play Victory in Jesus, and then we'll close. tell you what they're only uh it's only through jesus christ you can never gain victory over your sins amen and it's only through jesus christ that you can go to the father it's only through jesus christ that men must be saved it's only through his name and his name alone amen so anyways uh real quickly uh tuesday lord willing we'll be getting into luke chapter 21 and uh so we'll be getting into that and then uh, next week on Saturday, or actually this week on Saturday, uh, I don't know what we're going to be getting into. Hopefully, we'll get into the the old the Old Testament, and we'll start looking at some other like pictures and examples of of um, of uh, just people not being contentious, people not being brawlers, and so hopefully that'll be a you know a blessing to you, and uh, hopefully it might be something that you'll get you know, learn from and be able to get something from it. 
And so, um, but yeah, and then uh, we'll just keep trucking along in Luke. And after that, we'll get into the book of Acts and then come back to John. And then uh, we'll just kind of kind of go wherever the Lord needs us to go uh, through this contention, contention series, all right? So uh, be in prayer for me, be in prayer for one another, um, and uh, be in prayer for my assistant, be in, uh, my, my assistant Anna. Please be in prayer for the ministry and the videos. You know, pray that uh, people will get saved. Pray that people will be blessed by these videos and learn something and uh, maybe even come back to Christ. Amen. So with that said, I, that's all I got for, for you tonight. I love you guys. God bless you. You guys have a great night. You guys are the reason why I do what I do. And remember to, to think and do Bible. Be hearers and doers of the word of God. Amen. And uh, you guys have a great week. And Lord willing, we'll see you Tuesday. All right. I love you guys. God bless you. See ya. Love ya. Bye.